we bring you Creeps by Night. Network presents the 13th in a series of dramatic explorations into the vast and unknown darkness of the human mind. Tonight, in the absence of Boris Karloff, who has been your host on this program of mystery, we take the opportunity to introduce the man who henceforth will serve as your guide and companion along the dark and often terrifying pathway of the unexplored. He will come to you only as a voice, since for reasons best known to himself, he prefers to remain anonymous. He stands before me now, ready to lead you into the dim and distant world beyond the realm of human understanding. Creeps by night presents its master of mystery, Dr. X. <laughs> Good evening. I have been asked to serve as your master of mystery on these weekly pilgrimages into the unknown. To choose for you stories that peer deep into the tortured souls of men and draw aside the shadowy curtain of the mind. For the time being, I shall have to be known only as Dr. X. My identity cloaked in the very darkness of which we speak. Perhaps some of you will recognize my voice. If you do, I pledge you to secrecy. It will be my duty on this program to select for you stories that have been drawn from the mystery of life itself. From time to time, I will invite leading actors, men like Peter Laurel, Bela Lugosi, Edmund Gwen, Basil Rathbun, and others, to participate in our dramatic explorations. But enough of talk. Join with me now as we see unfolded before us the weird chronicle of the walking dead. <laughs> take you to the Black Island of Haiti, deep in the Caribbean, to a coffee plantation some 40 miles from the city of Port-au-Prince. It is long after dark, and the night is hot and sultry, deadly quiet, save for the rhythmic beating of native drums off in the distance. At long intervals, a human voice cries out, rising above the drums like the dismal wailing of a lost soul. On the porch of the cottage adjoining the plantation office, a man stares out into the darkness, obviously waiting for something. Suddenly, a car swings into the open gate, its headlights blazing. It pulls up before the cottage, and a gray-haired man, carrying a black bag, steps out. He mounts the steps, and the man waiting on the porch greets him. Dr. Nelson? Yes. I'm Walter Craig, manager of the plantation. Glad to know you, Mr. Craig. Sorry about being so late, but your call to the public health office somehow got lost in the shop. We've been under terrific pressure these last few days. It doesn't... Uh, doctor. Too late, eh? One of your foremen, wasn't it? Yes. He's still alive, but I don't think there's much you can do for him. Well, I'll try. Where is he? Across the road in that hut. But before you see him, I think I'd better tell you something about this. Go ahead. The man's name is LaRue. He's a Frenchman. He was released from the penal colony last April on probation. Came to me for a job, and I took him on because I needed help badly. I see. I put him in charge of a crew of native pickers, and he seemed to work out fine. He drove them hard, but he brought the crop in, and that's what counts. Uh-huh. Ten days ago, one of his crew was found dead in the fields. Someone had hit the poor beggar over the head with a bailing hook and split his skull. Hmm. I questioned a couple of them, but, well, you know how they are. Tight-lipped. All I could learn was that LaRue had had an argument with the man just before the body was found. LaRue, of course, denied killing him. That night, the Rada drums started a beat. They've been beating every night since. Why? The natives are certain the room murdered that beggar. They've been trying to put the hex on him. You hear that? It's the death whale. They know he's dying. They know it because they're killing him. Oh, now, hold on, Craig. It's all right to talk about native customs and black magic, but you can't kill people by beating drums and wailing. Doctor, how long have you been in Haiti? Six months. But what difference does that make? I've been on the island for 15 years, and I've learned one thing. 
There's a great deal that goes on down here that we know nothing about. That we can't explain. Oh, now, Louis. You can call it voodoo or black magic or anything you wish. But it's there. Let me tell you what happened. Go ahead. The more they beat those drums at night, the more LaRue drove the devils during the day. I warned him to lay off, but he laughed. The night before last, I caught two of them sprinkling graveyard dirt around his hut. What's graveyard dirt? They believe that dirt dug from around a corpse can maim and kill. That's rubbish. Maybe it is. But remember this. These natives are experts on poisons. They use dogwood root and bamboo dust, both deadly and with no known antidote. They use dried and powdered lizards and some stuff they get out of the gallbladders of alligators. Maybe there is something in graveyard dirt. I don't know. I doubt it very much. Well, at any rate, after I caught those two, I told LaRue he'd better get off the island if he knew what was good for him. He said he'd think it over. But they didn't give him a chance. This morning, he couldn't get out of bed. His legs were paralyzed. I watched him all day, and the paralysis kept creeping up his body. He can scarcely breathe now, and he can't talk. All he does is mumble. That's strange. Let's get a look at him. I'd better tell Miss Carlyle you're here. She'll probably want to come along. Incidentally, she doesn't know anything about this except that LaRue is sick. Who's Miss Carlyle? Her father owned this plantation. He died back in the States last month. She came down a week ago to look things over. She's inside the cottage. I'd rather not have a woman present when I examine him, Craig, if it can be helped. Well, all right. Follow me. Wait a minute. What's the matter? The drums. They've stopped. Oh, that's fine. They were beginning to get on my nerves. Come on. No, wait. Do you hear anything? Low voices and the shuffling of feet? No. I do. I'd better get a flashlight. Good Lord. What's that? I thought something was wrong. They've surrounded LaRue's hut. That's Miss Carlyle. Excuse me a minute. I'm out here on the porch. What's happening? All of a sudden, those drums and that chanting. Oh, there's someone with you. It's Dr. Nelson of the Public Health Office in Port au Prince. How do you do, Miss Carlyle? Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Doctor. What's going on out there, Mr. Craig? The natives have surrounded LaRue's hut. Why? I don't know. We better get to him, Craig, before they do some damage. That bracket certainly can't have a dying man. It's too late now. Too late? What do you mean? There's only one way to get along with the natives down here, Miss Carlyle. Don't interfere with them. Leave them alone. That's all well and good, Craig, but you say a man's dying in that hut. I may be able to do something for him. Of course, it's ridiculous. Order them back to their cabins, Mr. Craig. They won't take orders now. They're wild with religious fervor. That chanting you hear goes back a thousand years to when there were savages in the jungle. Do you mean to say that you're going to stand Just by... Just a minute, Miss Carlyle. I'll send the houseboy over to see what's going on. See inside? Yes. Bravo! What's not? I don't quite understand why you can't order them away, Mr. Craig. You'll understand if you're down here for any length of time. Oh, here comes the houseboy. You call him, Mr. Yes, Sobo. Go over to LaRue's hut and see what's happening. No, Mr. No. No can go. Him make Boko chant. LaRue lie more. Boko make Luamu. What's he saying? He says LaRue's dead. That's the Boko chant we're hearing. They're going to take his body away. They're going to turn him into a zombie. Oui, Mr. Zombie. Of all the ridiculous nonsense. What's a zombie? What are you talking about? A zombie, Miss Carlyle, is a corpse that's been brought back to life. Down here, they call them the walking dead. Do you mean to stand there and tell me that you believe that? I don't believe or disbelieve, Miss Carlyle. All I know is that for centuries, the natives of Haiti have conducted weird rites. Sober here, I'll tell you. Some of their ceremonies that make your hair stand on end. Is that any reason for letting a man die with savage drums beating in his ears? He's already dead. How do we know? They never used a bullcard chant except over a corpse. Now, look, Mr. Craig, I own this plantation, and you're employed by me. And I insist that you order those natives away from their hut. Don't lose your temper, Miss Carl. I'm not losing my temper, Listen but I... Listen to me a moment. I've had 15 years of hating. 15 years of learning how to get along with native help. You're not in the United States now. This isn't Georgia, Alabama. It's the West Indies. You're a foreigner in a strange land. Land where the roots of voodoo and black magic grow deep and strong. We know all that, Craig, but the fact still is... Just amazing. a minute, Doctor. I've seen men disappear on this island, vanish off the face of the earth. They were men who laughed at native superstition just the way you're laughing at it. Don't be stupid, Mr. Craig. Nobody's laughing. We're trying to save a man's life. Why did you call Dr. Nelson from port au Prince if you didn't intend him to examine the roots? Yes. Forty miles is a long way to come to listen to native drums. Neither of you can understand what I'm driving at, can you? All I know is that a human being is lying in that hut, deathly sick. When I saw him this afternoon, he was in pitiful condition. Nobody's denying that, Miss Carlyle. Now you say he's dead, just because you hear some chanting and some drum beating, and you refuse to order those natives away so the doctor can examine it. It isn't that I refuse, it's simply Never that... mind. If you won't order them away, I will... Miss Carlyle, come back. Miss Carlyle, please. Don't want to go over there alone. Quick, doctor, after us. We'll 
You'll never find her this way, Craig. We'd better go back to the house and phone for help. We've got to find her. I don't trust those devils tonight. I never saw anything like it. She ran across the road toward the hut, and before we could get to her, they swallowed her up like an avenging cloud. And then they were gone. That's how they work. Did they take LaRue's body with them? Yes. Come on. We'll take a chance and bust in on this ceremony. I may be able to keep them in check. Are you sure it's safe? I'm not sure about anything. Keep that flashlight off. I don't want them to know we're coming. Let's go. You know, it's always been a mystery to me why the authorities haven't stepped in to control these natives. They've tried, but it doesn't work. This stuff is a religion with them. That's no excuse for killing and kidnapping. They only kill when someone has done them harm. A rule had it coming to them. What about Miss Carla? She tried to interfere in one of their sacred ceremonies. Hold up a minute. Huh? I can see the light of their torches. Where? Over behind their shacks. See them flickering? Oh. Yes, I see them now. What in the devil? It's enough to make your blood run cold. That poor girl, if she's alive, must be out of her mind. Let's get a little closer. And keep your eyes open. They move like ghosts in the darkness. You can't hear them until they're on top of you. I certainly never expected to be stalking natives when I joined the public health service. I'll tell you that. Let's go. Let's sneak up behind the shacks and see what they're doing. All right. Incidentally, Craig, how many of them do you think there are? About 200. Good Lord. Under ordinary circumstances, they're quiet and peaceful. Oh, I should have known better than to keep Laura on a plantation. All this is his doing. Well, it's too late now to blame anyone. Over this way, Doctor. Crouch down. There. You can see him now. Hold up. They're all kneeling in a circle, except the one in the middle. Who's he? The Bokar, I guess. The head man. Oh, they stopped chanting. Now what? I don't know. Anything can happen. Don't move. That's a new chant. He's asking them questions and they're answering. I've heard that before. I don't like the sound of it. Look, Doctor, you stay here. I'm going to walk right into that circle. You better be careful, Craig. That automatic isn't going to be much help against 200 maniacs. Still, I'm going to tear you to pieces. I doubt it. Anyway, it's worth a chance. Oh, wait, I'd better go with you. No, this isn't your affair. It's mine. In case I do run into trouble, get back to the house as fast as you can and put in a call to the police. Yes, I will. Okay. Wish me luck. Good luck, Craig. What was that? It's Sobo. He's crawling up behind us. I wondered what had happened to him. Go back out. Bad stay here. We've got to find the girl, Sobo, the missing lady. No, 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 no. Booker man make kill chat. That. What did he say? That chant. It's the kill chant. Go back. Sobo bring missy lady. You know where she is? Sobo find. Is she alive? Ask him. Missy lady lives, Sobo. Sobo find. Sobo bring back. Go. All right. Come on, doctor. Back to the house. <laughs> I tell you, Craig, I don't trust your houseboy. It's been almost an hour since he sent us back here. The drum stopped beating long ago. He's always been trustworthy. He's been with me 15 years. Let's see if that phone works now. Maybe we can get through to port of prince What good will it do? They can't get here in less than an hour. And anyway, the whole police department couldn't tackle 200 of them. Hello? Hello? Ah, there's something wrong with the line. I've got a feeling we'll never see that girl again, Craig. Dead or alive. I want her not to interfere. Why didn't she listen to me? Why didn't she stay where she belongs, back in the States? How would I have enough trouble down here without this? Now, now, don't lose your head, Craig. Take it easy. Raving and ranting isn't going to get us anywhere. I suggest we go out there and look for her again. The drums and the chanting have stopped. Maybe they've calmed down. I'll go out. You get into your car and drive over to the Larimore Plantation. It's about ten miles from here on the road to Port-au-Prince. Get some help. You think there's time for that? Where are you other foreman? They're both in Port-au-Prince loading a coffee cargo. They would be away tonight of all nights. But anyway, I think that's the best plan. You go for help, and I'll see if I can locate Sobo. Wait. I hear someone coming, Craig. Don't open the door. Why not? I'll open it. I've got a gun. <laughs> Who is it? Who's out there? Sobo, Missy. I bring Missy Lady back, my... Get the flashlight off the table, Doctor. It's my houseboy. It's Captain Carlisle. Good Lord. Where is she? Come on. Now you're inside, Sobo. Did you be safe? Flashlight on the steps, Doctor. Yes, I am. Easy, Sobo. Easy. Watch the steps. The drums are beating again. Let them beat. <laughs> All right, carry her in, Sobo, and put her on the couch. Close the door, Doctor. Be sure it's locked. Yes, all right. Put her down, Sobo, carefully. Let me look at her, Craig. In the meantime, get some water. Water, Sobo. We oui, miss You're all right now, Miss Carlyle. Just relax. Open my bag, Craig. You'll find some spirits of ammonia. Right. There, now. Just relax. There you are. Oh, thank you. Now, just breathe deeply, Miss Carlyle. That's fine. Once more. There we are. Here comes the water. Oh, pour some in the glass. Put it on the table, Sobo. We need to... You feel better now, don't you? Yes. Here you are, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Now, drink this, Miss Carlyle. Here, I'll hold your head up. There, now. Just lean back. Oh, it was horrible. Simply horrible. I don't think you'd better talk for a while. I've got to tell you. They put his body in a grave, an 
open grave. A road? Yes. What happened when you ran across the road toward the hut? I, I don't know. Suddenly they were surrounding me. I could see their teeth flashing in the darkness. I screamed, and that's all I remember until I woke up. Yes? I was lying on the ground. They were all kneeling around the grave. His body was in it. There was a torch burning, and one of them was chanting. Bokor, make the moon ceremony. What's that? Sobo says the man chanting was the Bokor. The one who makes the dead rise and become zombies. Oh, well, I think we've had enough of native superstition tonight, Craig. Let's stick to the facts. How did you get away from them, Miss Carlyle? Oh, no one was watching me. They were all watching the body in the grave. I, I crawled off in the darkness. Sobo found me, brought me back here. Yes, well, it's all over now. You had a story for a while. I think you'd better try to get some sleep. I, I can't sleep. All I keep seeing is that poor man's body. Don't think about it. But isn't there anything we can do? Isn't there some way of giving him a decent burial? You might as well know what this is all about, Miss Carlyle. LaRue murdered one of the natives. Oh. Murdered him ten days ago. They've been out to get him ever since in their own way. That's why the drums were beating every night. I told you it was their usual ceremony, just so as not to frighten you. But it was more than that. They were seeking revenge. And now they've got it. You mean because he's dead? That's only part of it. They're going through the zombie ritual now. That's what you saw at the open grave. According to their belief, they can bring LaRue back to life. Make him a living corpse who'll obey their orders. Well, then why were they putting his body in a grave? That's part of the ceremony. They bury him until midnight. Then the corpse rises as a zombie. That's right, isn't it, Sobo? Why, it's the most ghastly thing I ever heard of. And the most ridiculous. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Dr. Nelson. How long does the, the person remain a zombie? As long as they want him to. The Bokor, the head man, controls that. They can stop it at will. How? You're asking me questions I can't answer, Doctor. Questions I wouldn't even attempt to answer. But this much I know. There are zombies on this island right now. How they came into being, I don't know. But they're here. I don't believe it. I hope I never have to prove it to you, Doctor. Do these these zombies talk and, and act like human beings? No. It's a, it's a horrible thing to say, but they look dead. Their eyes are hollow and their skin has no color. They walk like people in a dream, heavy-footed and leaden. When they try to speak, all that comes out is weird mouthings. It isn't very pleasant, I can assure you. And... That's what they're going to do with LaRue. I suppose so. Why? Revenge. As I told you, he not only killed one of them, but he drove them unmercifully. Once he's a zombie, they'll drive him, make him sweat. He'll become their slave. Do anything they order. You know that's nonsense, Craig. I'm not so sure, Doctor. Have you ever seen a zombie a living corpse? Only once. And I never want to see another. You mean there are actually people who've been raised from the dead? Of course not. You can take it from me as a position that death is final. Absolutely final. Perhaps throughout the rest of the world. But not in Haiti. Now listen, Craig. All your men seem to do is frighten this girl. I think perhaps the best thing, Miss Carlyle, would be for you to drive back into Port-au-Prince with me. Just midnight. We'll be there at 1.30. How about it? I... I don't know. It's a good idea. Chances are nothing's going to happen, but... What is it, Sobo? Steps on the porch. What? He says he heard steps on the porch. <laughs> don't be alarmed. I don't hear anything. Be oui, monsieur. Where's the flashlight? I have it here in my pocket. Wait. Don't move. What's that? Sobo's right. Someone is on the porch. You stand over there with a the flash, Doctor. Right. Get back, Sobo. I'll open the door. No, no, no. Stand no. back, I said. Craig, hey, listen. Zombie. Oh, no. No. No, 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 Doctor, take him into a bedroom and come back here. Hurry. Yes, come, Miss Carlyle. There's nothing to be afraid of. Zombie. Zombie. I know, but we'll take care of him. Dr. Nelson. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Stand back, Sobo. That's it. Miss Carlyle, it's right now, Craig. Good. Now, stand behind me a little to the left and keep that flashlight on the door. You're not serious about it being a zombie, are you, Craig? Whatever it is, it didn't sound human. All set now? Yes. All right. I'm going to open the door. Keep that light steady, Doctor. The door's locked, you know. I locked it when we came I in. I know. Craig, perhaps it might be better to... Don't worry, there are six bullets in this automatic. That should be enough. Get ready now. Here goes. There's nobody out there. Careful, Craig. The porch is empty. Are you sure? Positive. Come on there with that flashlight. You too, Sobo. We heard heavy footsteps, didn't we? And that weird moaning? Yes, but there's no one here now. Flashlight around. That's it. See anything? No. Not a thing. Well, there may be 
some footprints in the driveway. Let's check. It's hard to tell at night. There's a good clear print. That could be mine when I got out of the car. Matter of fact, it is. I suggest, Craig, that we lock up and remain in the house until daylight. No sense taking chances. Probably the best idea. What I don't understand is... Good Lord, that's Miss Carlisle. Come on, Bravo, follow me. What room is she in? She wants the end of the hall. What happened? The window. He was standing at the window. Who was standing at the window, Miss Carlisle? Malou. Malou? Yes. I've never seen anything so horrible. You're sure it wasn't your imagination? Oh, no, no, I saw his face. It was like a death mask. His lips were blue and his skin was ghostly white. Good Lord. Bravo. Oui, monsieur. You stay here with Miss Carlisle. The doctor and I are going out front. If you see or hear anything, yell. Please don't go far. We won't. Come on, doctor. What do you make of it, Craig? I don't know what to make of it. Do you think she really saw someone at the window? Wouldn't be a bit surprised. Watch those porch steps. I noticed one of them's a little rickety. What do you propose to do, Craig? Take a look around. Stick close and keep that light swinging. That's fine. I really think we'd be much better off if we locked all the windows. windows. Hold up. Thought I heard someone moving up ahead. Swing your light slowly to the left, across the road. Easy. Easy. Hold it. Lord in heaven, it's a man staring at us. It's Laurel. He's running away. Keep your light on him. Laurel! Laurel! Stop or I'll shoot! <coughs> you missed him. He's ducking in the hut. There's no hut. We've got him now. The two front windows and the door are the only exits. Come on. Right. All right. It's far enough. You take the gun, Doctor. I'll go back with some rags and some oil. Rags and oil? What for? I'm going to set that hut on fire. Craig, are you out of your mind? You can't burn a man alive. What makes you think he's alive? He's got to be alive. We saw him running. You still won't admit that strange things happen here on the island, will you? Strange, yes. But All the... right, if you think he's alive, we'll take him alive. Get down low and crawl towards that hut. Keep your light out. Ready? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> the hut's open. When we get close enough, flash a light through. You say you can't get out any other way? No. The door or the front windows. I'm watching them all. If this 38 doesn't stop him, nothing will. Is this far enough? I think so. I'm ready if you are. Go ahead. Flash the light through the open door. The hut's empty. No, it isn't. He's stretched out on the bed. See him? Oh, yes. What's he doing that for? I don't know. Keep the light on him. Come on. This may be a trap, Craig. Be careful. I'm watching him. Hold the light steady. Steady as I can. Are we going into the hut? Yes. Come right behind me. Well, there he is, Doctor. Hold the light, Craig. Let me get a look at him. Keep it on his face. Miss Carlyle was right. His lips are blue and his skin is ghostly white. Are you sure this man is LaRue, your foreman? Yes. I can't believe it. What do you mean? Is this the man we saw running into the hut? Yes, of course. And you were right. Evidently, strange things do happen on this island. They do? Yes, Craig. This man has been dead for three hours. That, my friends, was The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> 